Well, we are, it is my privilege to invite uh, Pastor David Gates to come. And uh, he must be a tired man as he spoke this morning in Warunga, then in the afternoon in Fountain. And, uh, and here, you know, we are uh, open for you to speak to us. And uh, may the Lord anoint you oh, as you speak. You. God bless you. Thank you very much. Let me make sure the mic is working. Is, can you hear me at all? Is it, is it on the mic? Okay. It's on. Yeah, it's on, and I can, I can hear it now. Oh, I, just, I just couldn't hear anything, so I was wondering. It's a privilege to be back with you again, just to get an idea of how many of you might have been at Warunga this morning or one of the other places. Can I get an idea? Of okay, so the majority, the majority were not there today. Um, I, I, I just tell stories and different illustrations at different places, and I, if most of you would have raised your hands, I would have to come up with a whole new set. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I appreciate that I can repeat some of it. But on the other hand, I'm not, gonna re, I'm not going to be the same, preach the same sermon. I'm going to preach a different subject. And when I get tired, I like telling stories more. When I, when I um, uh, start to weir, weir, get weary, I start telling stories. It builds up a lot of more energy because at heart, really, I'm a missionary. I'm not a preacher. And missionaries love to tell stories. And uh, I would like to invite you to Bow your heads with me now as we begin. Lord Jesus, thank you for the beautiful Sabbaths we have enjoyed today. Most of all, Lord, we want to thank you that you are in control of world events today and that you are leading your people into an opportunity to spread and preparing them to spread the gospel into all the world in a such a way that has never been seen before. We're living on the very edge of eternity and we so long to see you come in the clouds of glory. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it wasn't long, it seemed like. I don't know how long was it since I was last year with you. It's been about, oh, about two years, coming up on two years. Um, time has gone rapidly. A lot of water has gone under the bridge. A lot of things have happened. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing. However, we are certainly nearer to Jesus coming than we were two years ago. Would you agree, agree with me that things are rapidly accelerating toward the last final crisis? Um, your, your tables get smaller each time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, I should bring smaller Bibles, I guess. Um, but, no, it's fine. I was just, I would, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I was just trying to do a balancing act there on that. Um, let me give you... Initially, my, my first time back from the, uh, after I've been gone for a while is to give you a short update of what's been happening. Is that okay with you? Okay. Um, when I returned back to Venezuela, uh, I, was able to, um, I was able to tell them the good news that large teams of people were, had plenty of work to do and that you had given a mandate to get busy building churches. And, uh, and so, at least in one Indian area, two churches, two groups were sent out to work. Some of them were off from Aust Austria. A, a group from Austria came. Another group from Romania came and spent some time building churches. And uh, the result was approximately 70 baptisms in each of the areas, which, which is a good majority of the villages that were there. And uh, the pastor in that area was working as the chaplain for the military as well. And so, whereas the government was going farther and farther away from supporting religious work in this one area, he, was being, he, as a chaplain, was able to keep the doors open to build up. One of the ones that, uh, one of the churches that, the, the area was prepared, the walls went up, the roof structure went up, and the government stepped in and ordered everything to stop. And so it stayed without, there we go, suddenly. <laughs> it suddenly stayed, um, the, the construction work came to a halt, and uh, for nearly two years, it was only completed two months ago because the, the things came to a stop, and the government refused to let anybody can finish it, probably through influence of the, of the national church. But the local Indian captain called me uh, just a few months ago and said, are you aware that we have not been able to finish the roof? I said, no, I, thought, I haven't been able to go back yet. He said, because of the order of the military, 
they have not allowed us to finish putting the roof on. But we told them, this is our village. We can choose any church we want to to have it here. They said, no, you can't finish putting the roof on. And so there was the building without a roof all this time. So I called a pastor who was not there any longer. He would moved to another, another state and was working as a departmental for the conference. I told him, you need to go back and you need to negotiate with the military because you used to be the chaplain there and, you, and we need to finish it. Would you be willing to do that? Because I'm ready, re- getting ready to go to Australia and I would like to see that church finished. And, uh, and so he went back. He took his vacation time. He went back there. He negotiated with the military and he personally finished putting the roof on. So the, the captain of the village is very, very happy that that, was, that, that had happened. And uh, so that made it one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. We had budgeted approximately seven, but it turned out to be a lot more expensive. And I, I've asked for them to get, send me all the pictures. I think I have about five, five of them. I, I have them on my computer. I've been traveling day and night before coming here. I, I basically uh, have been on the road for two months solid with almost hard to get eight hours sleep. And after Europe, it was South America flying down. I took to the air, airplane. My wife was in Brazil. Our fourth grandchild was born in Brazil just a few weeks ago. My wife was down there while I was in Europe. I, I flew down to Puerto Rico, flew all night from Miami, and uh, I went through a big tropical storm going down to Grenada. I delivered the equipment. Then when I, pick, I went down to Brazil, I picked up my wife. We continued on to Bolivia. As soon as we landed in Bolivia, they told us, as we were, if you're going down to Santa Cruz, Bolivia, we want you to know that you're flying into the eye of the hurricane. Tomorrow, there's going to be a massive bloodshed in, in, uh, in Santa Cruz because the natives have surrounded the city. They all are armed to the teeth. The, the president of Venezuela has been flying weapons into the country, dropping them off to all the natives in order to arm the country for a great revolution. And uh, they said, you're flying right into the area where tomorrow there's going to be blood everywhere. And, I, and my wife said, are you sure we should go? I said, yes, we should go. They don't have any food. They don't have any gasoline. They're ready to cut off the water. And, and tomorrow there's going to be blood in the streets. I said, let's fly down. And we'll land right in the middle of it. And, and uh, we did fly down. And several things happened while we were flying. Some of you might have gotten one of my emails. Do you remember an email where I was requesting prayer? Some of you who get my emails, I don't know, how many of you receive our emails? Do you remember I sent out an email a, a month or so ago? There was a man on death row that was about to be executed, an innocent man. Do you remember that, that email? Uh, his name was Troy Davis, and he was supposed to be executed a week and a half ago. And, um, and, and we were praying that God would intervene the, to give him uh, a stay of execution. And um, as I was flying from Guayra, Medin, Bolivia, to Santa Cruz, Bolivia, the execution was supposed to take place. After I landed, during my flight, I was informed that the U.S. Supreme Court stepped in, ordered the stay of execution, and they are going to review the case, and it's almost positive that he will, he will be exonerated. The local state uh, refused to reconsider. They met, and even though out of seven witnesses, uh, out, of, out, of, out of seven witnesses, five recanted, saying we were forced by the police because of racial tensions to, to testify against them. We now re- retract our testimony because we were forced under duress to testify against them. The man is innocent. Five out of seven witnesses re- retracted their, their thing, but the state said execute him anyhow. There's a lot of injustice in the world. And, and when I landed and I heard at the U.S. Supreme Court, it was because of your prayers. Thank you very much. I sent that email requesting prayer to 25,000 email addresses. And I know thousands were praying. So as we were flying down, God answered our prayer in two ways. He first gave us a stay of execution. And when we landed, the government of Chile stepped in and told Bolivia if they didn't call off the president, didn't call off uh, the, the, the bloodshed that was about to happen, that they would remove their support of the Bolivian government. Brazil removed the support. Peru removed the support. Chile 